What up brothers, it's the Clipper King returning for a special video tonight on uh, the stuff inside that box. You're probably looking and think, what the fucking hell's he got there? It's not a turntable, although that's what the box is. But what is inside that box is pretty much, if you're a Batman fan or an Toys fan, that is pretty much Batman's wank bank inside there. And the stuff inside that box will make a Batman fan fire baby gravy all over his Calvin Klein's quick fashion because it's some exciting stuff. Uh, for, before I show you what's inside, I'm going to say a massive thank you to Richard Cosgrove or Cozzy from Sideshow Freaks or Cozzy80 on YouTube. I'm cutting the Bane review together uh, of a weekend. I got a message through Facebook. Rick, do you fancy reviewing this stuff? And I'm like, what is it? So he's told me it's basically, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this name right, but I'm going to try and I hope I don't kill it. It's either Tony Mize or Tony Myers. Uh, custom cape and a monkey robot master custom head sculpt. Now, he might as well have asked me that in Chinese because I didn't have a fucking Scooby-Doo where we were talking about. Anyway, he explained, it's a custom head sculpt of the that will fit the Batman uh, DX12 uh, with interchangeable face plates and then some custom capes, uh, a couple for the uh, DX12 and then one for the DX09. I thought, fucking two right, I will. So anyway, he sent to me as good as his word. They've come through today. I'm going to get him on the Batman. I'm going to pose Batman on the steps, I think, so you can see how the pose, uh, the cape looks on that. And I'm also going to pose him on the uh, building corner from the Spider-Man figure. So like I said, massive shout out to Richard Cosgrove for sending me these. Uh, much respect to him. I'm going to uh, review them up and uh, or just have a look at them as such and let you know my thoughts on them. Like I said, these are not something that I would have picked up myself, I don't think. So I'm a Batman fan, but I'm not... Not massive, but I am uh, excited to see them. So stick with me. I'll uh, get out the outer box and I'll show you what's inside. Right, so I've opened the box up and pretty much laid out everything that's in there. I'll just go through. Inside here is the iFrigno 51 uh, dyed cape. That's the, uh, I think that's the Raylon cape. That's the really long one, I think. That's for the DX12. So that's inside there. I will show you it. I will pose it in that and tell you my thoughts on it. Here is the uh, Monkey Robot Master custom Batman head sculpt that's based on the Medicon one, the way I understand it. Obviously, it's got sculpted, the eyes are sculpted in place, so there's no uh, purrs, and that's pretty much the head sculpt. Just looking at it straight off, it does look a bit wider on the jawline we'll have a look once that's on and the cheekbones do look fuller to me just to my eye i will have a look at it side at hot toys one in a minute and then there i think that's the face plate from the medicom one and then here is a robbie the painter face plate did i say robbie the painter or plater robbie the painter face plate that takes some saying See it fast. I'm going to put that on. Have a look. That's the picture of it end. That's more so for the Bane figure, I think. And then inside here, the 89 cape. And like I said, it's either Tony Myers or Mize. I don't know. I think it's Myers or Myers. I'm not sure. The 89 cape. And then the Dark Knight Rises cape from Tony as well. So, I'm going to get them uh, both Batman's art. I'm going to pose. I'll show them stock and then I'll do the changes and I'll do. Uh, I'll try and cut from stock to customised and explain what's on each figure. So, uh, just bear with me. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll start off with the 89 Batman because there's not that much to change on it. It's basically just a cape change. So, I'll basically show you the stock version. That's mine, how it's being posed in the cabinet. In the uh, stock cape, obviously everything else is stock on it as well. Now I will say I've seen videos on this cape that I'm going to put on this before. I think uh, Mike Echo did one about a month since. And I liked it, although I thought it looked a little bit rubbery, to be honest, when I, first, when I saw it in video. But I'm going to find out in a minute if that is the case. Now, the stock cape. I've always liked this cape and I know why people don't. They say it falls unnaturally. I uh, sometimes look too bulky and 
it, it basically doesn't hang right. Some have varied lengths that they want it and so on and so forth. I've always personally liked it and I always prefer wired capes. I like the Superman cape, I like this cape and I like, I made a wired cape for my DX02, which were not brilliantly made if I'm honest, but it did what I wanted it to do. Now, like I said, I don't think personally mine looks too bulky, but I do spend time posing it and folding it to make it look as natural as possible. So that's from the front. That's the side. That's the back, basically folds and twists. Basically that's to tighten up and bring the sides in. From the other side. And then back to the front. So like I said, I don't know if I would ever buy a custom cape simply because I do like the cape that comes on this. I like the way that if you look at the point on the cowl, it goes down into the seam, uh, and you can line it up on both sides, and same around the back as well. So yeah, I've always liked that, and I do think this is an awesome figure. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pop the head off, I'm gonna fit the custom cape, and uh, I'll tell you what I like or dislike about that. Right, straight out at bag. This is the uh, custom cape. See, I've got Batman, head off. And I've tried to take his cape off as carefully as I can, so I'm not going to mess about reposing it when I put it back on. And this is a custom cape. First thing that I like about it is it gives off a leather effect, but it isn't leather. It's kind of a... a oh, I don't know, really. Like a stretchy, lycra-lined satin of some kind. I don't know what the exact material is. I'm not a seamstress or anything. I do like how light it feels. And I do like the fact that how it moves. So it does look uh, quite in scale. Yeah, it does feel nice. And like I said, that is straight out of the bag and it was folded. So I've not had to steam it or anything like that. So I would think that if it does find a crease in it, then it will line and that crease will fall out on its own. So like I said, it does appear very nice to start with. I'll just show you the top. It's basically a all stitch around. It looks very much like, you know, like a, a gator for your gear stick in a car. It looks very much like that, which might be a weird thing to say because there might not be no car people out there, but yeah, it looks like that. It's got a little hole, obviously. I'm going to put the neck through that, get the head back on, and I'll show you what it looks like on the figure. Right, and now I've got it on. Not posed it up, but I am going to show it fully posed up, trying to get it as... Uh, as posed as I can get it to my taste sort of thing and I give you a tip what I normally do with this cape whether it be stock or that will be this one what I will say is it does look slightly shorter than the stock cape it does fall quite natural and I don't think there's much chance because that is his arm there so it's not puffed out which I know that's a lot of the reason why people are doing it um, I pretty much put it on lined the seams up to make it look as realistic as I could. I've pulled them out though. So yeah, that's it. Like I say, I like the fact it does give the appearance of leather without being leather. So obviously leathers are going to be a little bit bulkier than this is. Um, so yeah, it does move and hang quite nice really. But like I said, that's pretty much, I've just wrapped it around his neck and started filming. So what I'm going to do now is position it how I would pose it if that uh, cape or staying in this collection. All right, just a little bit of messing with it, and to be honest, it were only a little bit because what I normally do with this cape when I have the stock one on is to pull the cape in and to hold it where I want. What I do is I know on the film that the cape normally goes like that straight down. Now, because of I think it's the contour of the chest, you're always going to get this bump out look. Look, as much as you pull it down or try and bring it round, you're always going to get it. So it makes him look like he's got bitch tits. Now, you don't want that on your Batman. So what I normally do is bring the arm away from the body. I took it sort of inside his arm, because you're never going to see arms on this figure anyway. And then I put, take the arm as tight into the leg as possible. And then what he sort of does is he traps the first section at cape into his between sort of his arms and his legs, and then have him something like that. That is how I would go for it. 
Now, I know some people don't think that that's movie accurate, but like I've said before, I never really go for movie accurate. I go for more aesthetically pleasing, even if it means like the Bane, for example. Let me just show you Bane. About 50 people have said, why has he got both gauntlets on? Simple answer, he's got both gauntlets on because I want him to have both gauntlets on. That's it. That You said, there's not a scene in film where he wears both gauntlets. To that, I'd say, I don't give fucking two monkey squirts a piss. If I want him with two gauntlets on, I put him on. For the simple reason is, I don't like the joints on his wrist. So that's why he's got two gauntlets on. So I like it, so he has it on. So, I don't go for movie accurate. I don't go through the film and say, oh, in this part of film, his cape looked like this. And in this part of film, I don't go for that. I want to pose it. And when, it, when I look at it, I find it pleasing to my eye. Now, if I looked at that, what's wrong with it? It's not symmetrical. I like this side because I like sort of how, how the cape sort of drapes there. But this side, it sort of trapped a little bit more. So I'll go and I'll just mess with it. Tuck it in or pull it round a touch or whatever just to make it look more natural. Now, I prefer that to how it were and what would, what would be more movie accurate. That is a better look for me. But... Like I say, to each his own. But I will say, it is a nice cape. Now, I'm not going to say the prices of these capes for two reasons. Firstly, I didn't look it up because, I, like I said before, I don't think I would buy custom stuff. Uh, and the second reason is, I don't think any of these items are for sale anymore anyway, so you wouldn't be able to get them. So that's why I'm not going to advertise the price. Now, if the creators of any of these parts want to come on and say, Clipper, I don't think you've done me justice, or thanks for mentioning us, or whatever, then they're free to. But like I say, I've been asked to do this as honestly as possible. And like I say, I think that cape does look awesome. Would I pay? Would I buy it? Yeah, but I would only pay possibly up to 15 or 20 pound English money. I don't know what that cape went for. So that's my thoughts on that. Before I go to the other Batman, what I'm going to show is this cape can be sort of chucked over his back and I'm just going to try and show how that can be done. I'm going to pose it and then I'm going to show you how I did it. All right, so as you see, this side I've swept back and basically what you do is, because the cape's not lined, I'll show you with this side, the cape's not lined and it's not the same material inside, well, it is obviously the same material, but the outer side gives this shiny leather effect where the inside looks dull. So what you have to kind of do, and I'm not going to really be able to do this with my left hand, is sort of put a pleat down the cape so you can still see the shiny side and fold it back kind of like that. Now, I've got to say, on this Batman, I don't like his cape back anyway. So that's never a start. It's a non-starter for me, that. But that's pretty much the effect you would get. But I would never pose that Batman like that. I just don't like it. It doesn't look mean enough to me. Like I said, I do prefer it how I had it before, sort of, in there. You see plenty of belt. And like I said... Because of the arm, because it's sort of trapped there, it's flat to his chest, and you get the definition. I prefer it like that. So that's the 89 Batman with a Tony Myers or Mies. I'm sorry, I'm probably fucking crucifying your name. I, like I said, I don't know him. I know he's a sideshow freak and he's a creator, a customizer, um, but I've never spoke to him, so I've never asked him how he pronounced his name. But that's his cape. I do think it is a nice piece, and if you're a massive Batman fan, I would say try and pick one up if you can make it any more. But like I say, depending on the price, would we'll decide whether I got one or not. Right, moving on to the DX12. Just going to show you stock version. Obviously, that's the Spider-Man building corner. And that's my uh, excess stock DX. Now, I will say, if I'm getting close here. Oh, the lighting's going to be light. I have painted his eyes darker. So where most people would have the pink eye line, this is black. I did do that. I also gave the uh, mouth plate sort of a, a fine black wash, which sort of, all it does is really gets into the deep parts of the skin and then sort of dry over it like a dry brush dark effect. It's not much darker, and you probably won't even pick it up on the camera, but I did do that. I warmed up his upper armour, so his shoulders and his pecs. I held him a lot tighter to the figure underneath and let him cool down. So that is now flush into his, to the uh, true type underneath. And same with his shoulders, really. In, his shoulders plates were sort of out there to start with, so that took them in a little bit. I have done that. 
I did warm the gauntlets and open the uh, this up. I widened them sort of thing and I cut sort of around the top of the glove so that there's no strap around the glove now so the gauntlet does come down. While the gauntlet was warm I did also sort of bend that in so that's flush to the arm as well but he is obviously in a straight arm position. Right, his cape is stock. I don't particularly like his cape, but what I do with it, I'll sort of pull it to one side as if the wind's got it. I put my fingers in it like that and I twist it to where I want. And then when I fight like that now, you see it's got the three strands hanging down side at building. And then what I do is I just keep working them until they put a fine crease down it so it naturally falls into that position. That is how I work the cape. Also, a little trick, the cape that comes from this side, I sort of pull it back between the figure and the, like you say, the clear stands inside there. But because I've pulled that corner of his cape across there, I don't know if I'm catching this really well, but across there too, you don't see the stand behind him. And then I'll just put that in line. So it looks like the wind's coming at him from there and blowing his cape round and to that side. And that is how I pose my cape whether it be on the steps which this figure comes with the step diorama or on top of this building corner now i've put it on this because it will hang it will drape and hopefully with the capes that i'm going to show you i will be able to sort of wrap it around and drape it down the building because it is a softer material than this so that's what i hope to do but i will also show you the other capes on the stairs because i want to sort of try and pose it so it will flow down the step as well depending on length of cape because i haven't tried it on yet also, like I said, I'm going to put the other head sculpt on, the custom uh, head sculpt, Monkey Robot Masters head sculpt, it's called. I didn't know of it, I'll be honest. I, it's only what I've read up and the information that Richard sent me. So I'm going to swap it out and I'm going to see what uh, my thoughts are. But like I said, that is my stock pose. Right, now, all I've swapped, that's the other stock cape. I've swapped... To the other head sculpt so like i said it is a slightly bigger head and uh, slightly uh, i don't know if it's more accurate or i don't know i don't know what it is it's slightly a different shape oh best thing i can do here is sort of show you both heads together so obviously the left is the optoys head obviously with the purrs and then the custom head, and which I understand is based on the Medicom figure. Sort of, it's sort of bigger in this area. It's got a definitely bigger jawline, I would say. Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't know which is more accurate, to be honest. I couldn't, I couldn't really decide. It seems a different shape though, to be honest, and all the angles on this one seem more pronounced than on this one. This one seems softer, like softer lines, where this one seems to be more chiseled in the cheekbones, sort of the section of the head. It comes down here side of forehead. And then, like I said, like blown out, jawbone sort of thing. And then this is the mouth plate that, uh, that came with this head sculpt. Now I thought the Robbie the Painter mouth plate went onto this head, on the head that's on, but I'm not sure that it does. I think it goes onto the Hot Toys head plate because it won't fit on that. And I definitely don't want to try and start pushing and pulling it around. So that's the custom head. Um, I don't know if it's more movie accurate. I'm not, I'm, like I said, I'm not an anal Batman fan. I think of the two, I prefer the Hot Toys one, if I'm honest, because of the poseable eyes. I've always liked the purrs. I know some people don't. I think painting the eye line off helps him look more squinting. But I, I think I prefer the shape of the Hot Toys one, if I'm honest. But I don't suppose that's a bad option. Like I, get, I say again, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know what this head sculpt went for and I understand that he's gone now anyway. That's it from the side. I suppose uh, I suppose that section look, does look better. Sort of the bend of the head at the back and the thickness of the ear. I suppose that does look movie accurate from there. 
will say as well, I'll just pop this head off, it is inside, it has been, it has got metal, these metal like uh, little metal bits inside, so it will fit on to the magnet neck, so it does go on. So yeah, it is a nice option, but if I had to, if I had to pick, I think, in all honesty, I would go for the Octoy Z. But I'm not, I'm not shitting on the uh, the customizer by any stretch. It's obviously done something that I couldn't do, so I give respect to him. So I'm going to do now. I'm going to go. I'm going to take that off. I'm now going to fade from the. That is back to stock hot toys. I'm now going to use that head with the Robbie the Painter custom mouth. Right. And there's the Hot Toys head with the uh, Robbie the Painter's mouth plate. I will say I do like that and I would possibly buy that. Only thing on this one, and I'm not going to pressure it because it's not my figure, or it's not my part, should I say. I pushed it in, it felt really tight at first, and I just pretty much rested it in position. But if you were to look at it from there, it's not pushed all the way in because basically... I don't want to. I don't want to pressurize the mouth plate that much because, like I said, it's not mine. I'm really careful when people lend me these things, so I've pretty much set it into position. And I do think the expression's awesome. I, like I said, I don't know how much that mouth plate goes for, but I do really like it, and it's been a nice addition to the Hot Toys one. So I do think that looks more accurate and slightly better than the mouth plates that the figure came with. So I am loving that. So I'm going to leave that set up, and now I'm going to change the capes. As I'm changing this cape, I will just show this uh, custom Tony's cape. If you look on the corners, it's got like a black tag which goes in. It's that all oh, really nice and easy. A lot easier than the Octoys one does. And then obviously you push that down. That locks into position. And then you can sort of move his cape and drape it behind. Right. So, again, similar material, in fact, finer material than on the, um, that's the stand coming through. Finer material than the one used on the 89 cape. And I do think that one is just about the right length for my mind. Let's pull it behind. This one might look better on other stand, to be honest, so we'll do that. Yeah, that one. Again, this cape, I would probably pick one up because for certain poses, it does look really natural. I think the scale looks really good and it does hang really nice. Fits on easy. It does drape nice. So I would, if that cape were an option, it doesn't look right here, obviously, from side because the pole goes up there. But if you were to waft it round, pull it off to one side like I did with the other one. No, they don't look good like that, but it'd look better on the other stand. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the figure to the other stand. And then, uh, but I do like this cape, I would say. I would like one of these capes as an option for certain poses, particularly fighting poses, because the Octoys cape is a little bit heavy for fighting poses. So just bear with me. I'll change the stand and I'll show you what the cape looks like when it's draped down to floor. Right, so I've put him on the uh, put him on the step diorama, and I've got to say I've slightly changed the pose, so he's just walking down steps. Also, I've not got the crutch section grabbing at him, so the cape is flowing as natural as possible down his back, and I do like that cape. It is, yeah, very nice. It would definitely be a nice option. Again, depending on price, or if whoever created this would like to send me one for now, that'd be even better because I do like that cape, and it is a a different option to the Octoys one. Slightly shorter, like I say, it just touches the ground. I think the length is pretty perfect, uh, and I do like it stood like that. Let's just go back, show you pose. Like I said, that is the uh, Robbie the Painter mouth plate, which I would like. I don't know if they're still in circulation, and the Tony Myers cape, which is really nice as well. So yeah, I do like those. I'm gonna move it on. And I'm probably going to go back to the other base and put the uh, Iferigno cape on. I hope I'm pronouncing that right and all. I had a bit of a fucking brain fart tonight. 
I've had a rethink on that. I've took this cape out and basically it's the dyed rail on one for, is it I for Rigno or I for Rigno 51 or something else. I've seen this cape a few times and toyed with getting it. Now I've got it in hand. I don't think it feels fantastic if I'm honest. And like I say, I don't want to piss on nobody's work. It's not my place, but on the other hand, I don't owe nobody fuck all, so I can be honest. I personally don't like that cape. I'd never, ever put it on my Batman. You basically have to push them down into them holes, which has been a fucking nightmare. I've had 10 minutes at it, and it just... I can get it in, but it just won't stay in. So I thought, is it going to be worth it anyway? Because the material's nowhere near as good as the other one. And you're basically going to get a... You're going to get it to look... See, if that were in... The drape is going to be like that. I just think it's too untidy. Uh, it's not as good as the Octoys one for me. And it's definitely not as good as Tony uh, Mayers or Myers. I, I wish I knew his name. I'd fucking... He's going to love me when he sees this. But that one for me is a definite no-no. So I'm going to get the Batman pose back up. Uh, give him the uh, best look what I think of. Give you a last pose and tell him your thoughts on all the parts. Right, so to end, I'm going to set back up. If I had the options of stock versus the parts I've seen, and firstly, I've got to make sure I've got to. I can't stress enough how grateful I am to Richard Cosgrove for letting me see these things because other than this, I'd have only ever seen them in video or in pictures, and that can be deceiving. So I am glad to have seen these parts in real life. Secondly, I'd like to say thanks or apologise to the guys who've created these because, like I've said again. I can't stress it enough, they've done something that I couldn't do, all of them. But if you're asking me, having now seen them, what I would recommend to other Octoy collectors or Batman fans, I would say go for the uh, Tony Mayer's cape. Definitely, because I think that looks awesome. I think the scale of it is really good. Like I said, I, I don't mind the Octoys one, um, but I would choose this one over the Octoys one. Second would be the Hot Toys, and third, in fact, I'm not even going to list it, the uh, Ifrino one, not for me at all. I'm sure some have got it and love it, but it's definitely not for me. I don't like it. Um, head Sculpt. Let me get the other Head Sculpt in. The Hot Toys one is on. This is the one, the custom one based on the Medicom. I think this is a decent option. And it might be more screen accurate, but for me, it's the Octoys one. I love the purse system. I know people don't like it, and that's fucking sacrilege from what I understand on the uh, Freaks board to say you prefer purse, but it's just an option. I do like to pose my figures and have them look as real as possible, and I think you need purse for that. And I do think that some people don't position their eyes where they really should be, but that's just my thoughts. So I would take the Octoys head over this one. The mouth plate by Robbie the Painter is really good. I do like the expression and I do think it looks more movie accurate. So I would take definitely the Robbie the Painter mouth plate and that cape. On the 89 Batman, I would stick with the Octoys cape because I, like I said, I do like a wide cape. Um, the other one is a nice option. I, I might have it depending on the price and just have it an option. But if I could only pick one, it would be the Octoys one. So I do like that. I'm going to get all these things boxed back up now and get them sent back to Richard. Massive thanks to him again. And I will just say at this point that over the next week or so, I have got some custom wired capes coming for this figure. I think I've got two. Uh, that A guy who makes them has asked me if I'll review for him. He has offered to give me one. And I'm going to do an honest review. And I can't wait to get that cape. Oh, you've possibly seen it on eBay, the one that's coming. But he's sending me one. Or he's sending me two. Uh, one of them will be for sale, and I'll tell you what my thoughts are on them and how you compose them. So, not much I can say. Massive thanks to Richard. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you appreciate uh, my honest approach. And also, if any of the customizers takes offence to anything I've said, then they can contact me. Not a problem. Uh, and I, like I say, I'm only I'm only saying what I see, so I'm not trying to just piss on anybody's chips. So, for now, there's a Clipper King, and I'm out of here. Just a short little add-on on the end of this video for a good friend of mine, Derez. He asked in his Batman video how to get the cape in. This is how I do it. If you look at the clip, 
and the hole it goes into. Get the sharp bit of the cloth over clip. You see? So it's inside there like that, pal. And then turn it over. Push it. Sorry. Push it into the hole as far as it'll go. And then down and back. And that will put your clip right in. And that's left-handed, buddy. So if you haven't done it already, Duraz, sir, that's Goldie Rizzo, anybody who doesn't know. That is how you put your shoulders in, pal. I hope I made that look simple enough. Like I say, just wrap the cloth around the peg, push down, pull it forward, like keep pushing down. And if you have trouble, what I find works is push his armour up a touch because it creates space between the armour and the rubber suit underneath. And then when you've done it, pull the armour back down. But that is how you get them shoulder pegs in, pal. This is Clippy King again, and I'm still out of here.